ready for another lesson. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number six of Back Row Banter, your six. new favorite casual movie talk podcast. Is it six already? Is that yeah, what we're up six there? already. Six already. Six weeks. Six in, in the bags. making. Uh, well, four, four, four weeks. weeks. Ah. We had two episodes. We had two episodes that were, uh, that were the, two the well, two at least first. three of us can count. <laughs> and you're the one with insurance jobs. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a scary. Thing. Yikes. I am your host, Adam Schwartz. Joining me today is Humble Brag Masses degree guy himself, Nathaniel Gingrich. Yeah, we gotta talk about this name. This is, this is going on like week four. This one. I'm, I'm wanting to switch it up. I think we gotta get something going. We'll get some new going. We'll get some some new going. Maybe new. You change. That's what you changed your name to in a group me. I thought we were running with it. Oh, should I? Is that how we're we're coming no, up with that now? That's not at all. But okay. I, I saw that next I week on Back Row Banter. Daniel yeah. gets a new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone to be yeah. continued. Once every once a month, we come up with a new nickname. Is that what we're doing? No, but <laughs> whatever whenever it feels good. Do you just not? What what is it about humble brag master degree guy? Uh, it's just it's getting stale to me. I need to keep it's it fresh. Sta- okay, I need to keep it, need to keep it popping. Keep it moving. Yeah. Is it long? Yeah, I maybe know, if I, we, I don't mind saying it. H B M D G. That that's nah, worse. That's, 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 that's worse. That's way worse. <laughs> that is worse. Yeah, that sounds like something <laughs> untoward. <laughs> also joining me today is my boss Tyler Vidalis. Hey. Car, oh, hey, Carhartt himself. Carhartt guy. One Sponsor. time, one time I saw Tyler <laughs> getting ready to leave work, and his jeans were Carhartt. The yep. jacket he was putting on was Carhartt. Yep. His hat was Carhartt, yep. and I believe his gloves too. I don't you wear gloves. gloves. Okay, you didn't have gloves. What else no. did you have? You had one more thing that was. Uh, I think that might have been it. I think I might have been wearing a t-shirt boots. under my boots or caterpillar. God damn it! Yeah, oh, so close. Also joining me, <laughs> and uh, our final fourth to the uh, quartet. Is that what? Yeah, that's that's four. Yeah, that's four. Yeah, is the, uh, the torture porn enthusiast Blake Holder? You should think about a new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, what I was getting, getting to. Uh, I, like, I don't know how I'm not, how I'm holding up to this. Like the torture porn enthusiast? I mean, I haven't even watched a torture porn movie in I don't know how long. Yeah, it's, I mean, just, it's just it's a hot one to start. With. Like, <laughs> okay. It's like casual movie guys, and you get the torture porn <laughs> yeah, the box. straight to the face. <laughs> True. My True. mom's can, listening, guys. These are. We, I hope you know. I can change all of these. So just <laughs> let me know. We'll just let it flow. We'll let it. We'll yeah, let we, go. we might have to uh, we'll let look, look in that one. Of course. Yeah. Well. Um, today on Back Row Banter, uh, we got some news for you today. A lot going on with delays and when theaters are reopening and everything like that. So we'll we'll talk about that a lot yeah. probably. Um, it's gonna be the f- we're gonna be covering new to streaming for the first week of August, which is one of the big weeks um, where everything gets put out there. Then for our main segment, uh, oh, we'll do what we're watching. Then for our main segment, we got Blind Spotting. Uh, so hope you guys checked that out, or if you have not yet. Go check that out and then maybe come back. And then uh, we got our entropy list, we'll our outro. Come definitely come back, yeah. yeah. Entry list, outro, and then that'll be it. Cool. Yeah, so let's uh, let's get into the news here uh, really quick. Um, well, I guess we'll just start off by talking about um, a lot of delays coming out here. Yeah. And also some talk about when we might be seeing theaters coming back. Um, so I let's, let's go over the list here. We got Top Gun, A Quiet Place. Sorry, Top Gun Maverick and A Quiet Place both push back to 2021. Paramount pushes both those back. A couple of sequels. Is yeah. anyone surprised by that? I'm not surprised no, by that. Yeah, me no. at this point. Yeah. yeah. I think most of these movies, like I said, I think we were talking about this last week. I reckon most of these are going to stay closed through December at Without least. I think they're yeah. looking at next year. Yeah. So let me, fin- yeah, let me finish off the delays. It's Mulan is unscheduled. So they just they said yeah we're not releasing it and or holding on to that same with Black Widow mm. basically the same sure. situation mm. they haven't announced release date for that um, so yeah Disney on schedule Mulan and push back the all the Avatar sequels one full year and the next Star Wars film whatever that ends up being another year as well and then Ten Tenet is still facing release turmoil sex que- slash questions uh, we there's no release date really set for that it, there's rumors that it'll just be released as theaters reopen um so that was there's two stories that i found on hollywood reporter once it, one covering how tenant is being pushed back again i think they had a release date set for mid august um and now instead they're just kind of saying hey we'll we'll release when we can they're not really yeah. getting another um release date and then bill and ted 3 is to hit vod and select sim- cinemas simultaneously um so i guess theaters that are opened up will have it but for everybody else in mm. places that are theaters are not opened up it's going to be straight to on demand similar to 
Trolls World Tour and King of Staten Island, that kind of format. Hmm. So a lot of delays there, a lot of things changing, and then on top of all of that, AMC AMC is deleting, sorry, delaying their theater reopening um, to mid August. So they mid to late August. So they said originally hoping for late to late July. It is basically late July or late July is coming very soon. Um, and not a lot of places reopen fully. Um, no really, no places really open fully. So uh, delaying that a little bit to mid to late August as of now. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, yeah, like we were kind of saying, I don't think any of us were not are finding this unexpected or, yeah, or, or weird not. news. I was think I'm thinking about the Avatar thing because those are originally I think they're supposed to come out in like 2014 or something oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. So it it's you wonder what the state of the effects are going to look like because if they're still working with like the same blueprint from back then, I just feel like technology has come so much further now mm-hmm. that um, it's just it's just going to be. I wonder if you have to keep building on it, or if you have to like start and Don't start it over oh, right? each mean, time. Yeah. Every time there's a big jump or something like that. Um, so that I find interesting, just because I'll be. In, I we were talking off pod earlier about does anyone really care about this anymore? And I don't think people do, but I think depending on James Cameron, what he does, he's able to generate a lot of interest just on his own, just being James Cameron. Yeah, right. So I'll be James interested Cameron. to see what yeah. these look like. <laughs> I mean, he has three of the top ten greatest or biggest releases of all yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think Avatar is number one. Is it, uh, is it, it was no, a, a yeah, Infinity Avengers. War. Fi- yeah, 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 sorry, Endgame okay. finally dethroned it mm-hmm. after like three movie theater releases. They released like an extended cut with like one extra scene. So yeah. We'll go back and see it. And that's mostly just because Avatar was in theaters for so long right. and had such a premium with the 3D tickets too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So people were just paying through the nose to, and, to yeah. see it yeah. and seeing it multiple times too. I remember that release. That was what, 2009? 2009, yeah. yeah. That's definitely yeah. a while ago. The year I graduated high school. The year I turned nine. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that kills me every, every time. Every time. <laughs> oh, man. It makes the math easy, though. It does. It does. Yeah. <laughs> Born in 2000. Absolutely. You know, there you go. Um, yeah, and then AMC, I will, we'll see when they reopen. I mean, so right now in the article that I was reading, 35 states have said it's okay for theaters to reopen. In those thirty-five states, I don't know how many how many theaters have actually reopened and stuff like that. Um, but as of now, AMC is still not open, as far as I know, anywhere really. Um, and so, th- they're just delaying until whenever they can open. As as of now, they're saying late August. Yeah, I mean, even if you get a couple of states that do open, like how many people are gonna say, "Yeah, I want my movie out in one theater." Well, yep. Christopher Nolan's definitely not. Christopher, Nolan, yeah, that's the other right. thing. Is, so is, anything that's like actually worth it is probably going to get pushed back regardless yeah. until yeah. this becomes a mass opening. Yeah, and so Tenet has been the one that everybody's saying, okay, when theaters reopen, this is what everybody will go see. Um, so that will be a probably pretty big release, I think, just because I think so many people are actually going to go out and try to support theaters and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for it. It's just, and, and but Nolan is because I love Nolan, um, and he he himself has said how pissed off he is that it keeps getting delayed but it's really not up to him it's oh, up to Warner cares. Bros and Warner Bros is no he, he's he's come out and said he's no not no but I don't, I don't think he's a person that's like well release it on video VOD or something like right. that he, he wants it yes in, exactly in, in, so, so he's a yeah he, but he, he just doesn't want it delayed anymore he's, he's trying to push it as much or trying to push for well, the actual release sit down Chris no one yeah we'll, we'll let it out when it's yeah done. I think it's just hard to <laughs> yeah. stay <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to stay excited about it because yeah. you know it's probably not going to happen anytime soon so yeah, there's, there's certainly I'll save my no, excitement for when it does have to come out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not to cut you off. And yeah, there's certainly really no timetable on this, right? So, I mean, you could probably bet the next time they, they give a date, it'll probably get pushed back after that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be surprised if, you, if, like, Mulan or something like that goes to VOD or yeah, Disney+. Plus. Of course. Uh, I just don't think, I don't think Tenet will. I don't no. think Avatar will. I don't no. think. And I don't really want to see Tenet in my home. No. no. You know what I mean? Like, Chris Nor Avatar. Avatar. Yeah, or, or Avatar, right. yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I cut you off, Blake. Could you no, 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 no worries. Yeah, but, like, Tenet... Nolan films need to be seen in theaters, in mm. my opinion. Like, Dunkirk, seeing that in IMAX versus seeing it afterwards on my TV, are two very different movies. Though. Right. It's two very different experiences. So, Tenet, all of Christopher Nolan's movies are like that, in my opinion. Even even the Dark Knight trilogy. I mean, doing seeing that movie in theaters was di- way different than watching it at home. Mm-hmm. And that, that's how it is for every movie, but just for Nolan movies specifically, um, I think you kind of have to wait for that to come to theaters. Sure. Uh, the agreed. One of the stories I was reading about the tenant delay is that uh, they are considering what might be a new normal kind of uh, for at least for the next few years is 
theaters that ha- are open, they'll release in theaters. Places that are not uh, do not have theaters open, there's also going to be a VOD release, kind of. Mm. Um, so we'll see what what happens with that. I don't really know how I feel about that kind of release schedule because people like us would go see it in theaters, but if people are paying twenty dollars at home instead, I, I don't know. How do you guys, how do you guys feel about that? Having a kind of staggered release there. I just think it kind of fudges all the numbers at the end of the day. What do you mean by that? Like all like uh, how many people went on theaters and mm-hmm. you know I think yeah I don't I don't know like I said before I I don't think anything major is gonna come out unless it's a big mass release. Yeah, and I, I, I've always been a big advocate for seeing stuff the first time. Seeing it in the theaters mm-hmm. is, enhances the experience. Oh, right? for sure. Um, so anytime yeah, I can, I would try to do something like that. It's unfortunate that's the reality we're in, right, where that's not always feasible. Um, but I guess safety's first, right? That's kind of what yeah. we're all looking at here. And then uh, with time, we'll, we'll eventually have some answers. Yeah, the saga continues on when we'll get get back to movie theaters. It's sad, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, like I want AMC to take my $20 a month. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please take it out of my account. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something I think I've talked about before, but, like, with if theater chains don't reopen, sure, the movie theaters might not go away, but they'll be much smaller, and so you won't mm-hmm. have things like a, or, uh, mm-hmm. a list or a movie pass or something like that. Mm-hmm. So that that's why these big, having these big corporations like AMC stay around is so important, and that's why I've been kind of so scared about them closing, is, is you won't see that kind of wide bet wide spectrum services like sure. a big corporation can offer so yeah we'll i guess we'll just we'll see what happens with that um on to the next news story universal circling tom cruise movie that will shoot in space the question is is tom cruise trying to kill himself by movie because he seems to just <laughs> always try and do the next thing until eventually one of these things is not going to work just out for him. Just next level shit. Yeah, like, yeah. He's, he's jumped off buildings, he's climbed the biggest building in the world, he held onto the side of a plane, he was dangled below a helicopter. Like, I would love to see him. He learned how to fly a helicopter for uh, Fallout. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. like I'm, I'm pretty sure he's just he's trying to suicide himself and people won't let him. <laughs> I love to see him in like, an Everest movie. Just have him do that at this point. <laughs> yeah. I, I could see it. Uh, I don't think it's past Tom Cruise to want to go climb Mount Everest. No, he's a lunatic. No, he's great. <laughs> no, that, that, that guy will do anything. <laughs> yeah, um, so this is the same um, people behind uh, Edge of Tomorrow that Tom Cruise Oh, Doug in. Lyman? Yep. Um, and so they will, right now they're in talks to uh, send them to space with uh, Elon Musk and NASA are, are also, I guess, mm-hmm. attached to their project. I'm assuming to get them to space, of course. Mm-hmm. Um T- this I don't know, but there was no specific release window on when we can expect this because Tom Cruise has to finish Mission Impossible Seven and Eight okay. um, beforehand, which before they can film this, uh, which will stop production because of the pandemic. So, might have, be you, have you seen the original Mission Impossible? Oh yeah, I've seen all of them. Yeah, uh, the original, the first three I haven't seen in a while. Yeah. Um, number th- the the third one with uh, I've never seen number three. Phillips with Phil Team Hall. Yeah. yeah. It's so the third good. one's pretty good. The third yeah, one might be my good. favorite in the series. The Phil newest Timahawk. one's not bad. Oh, no, the new ones are great. Uh, Don't that, get me wrong. That one pleasantly surprised yeah. me. What's Fall, the newest? Was that Fallout? 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 Yeah. 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 yeah, Fallout was really good. Henry Cavill in that movie is yeah. fantastic. So, yeah, so we'll see. Space movie. Yeah. We'll I see. don't think there's a better Tom Cruise movie than Days of Thunder, and you can't change my mind. I've never seen it. Quick thoughts on um, the Tom Cruise, and now we're talking about him being in outer space and all types of things. Uh, thoughts on Edge of Tomorrow? Did you guys like that? I loved that. Oh, oh yeah, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow is yeah. awesome. Yeah, it, it's one of those just good like shooter, you know, fun fun yeah. action movies that's got a decent plot to it and, and Tom Cruise. Now, so. do you like Edge of Tomorrow or Oblivion more? Edge I of haven't tomorrow. seen Oblivion. I haven't seen Oblivion either. I like Edge of Tomorrow more. So yeah. maybe we'll have to do Oblivion on the podcast. Which one has more Emily Blunt in it? A Quiet Place. It's <laughs> <laughs> probably the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, moving on to our next and I think final move, news story. Oh, not final. Okay, next news story. Zack Snyder pulls back curtain on his Justice League cut. So if you guys, what does this mean? Yeah. So uh, the film. Uh, let me read the the subhead here. The filmmaker revealed the Snyder cut will be more than two hundred and fourteen minutes, and confirmed none of Josh Whedon's shots will be in this version. Have you ever heard the Alfred Hitchcock saying that the perfect runtime for a movie is directly proportionate to the endurance of the human bladder. <laughs> I've not heard that, but that, that sounds pretty accurate. Yeah. 214 for, minutes is let's, pushed. Let's play that out. That's almost three and a half hours. That's impressive. I'm in. 
That, that is over actually three and a half hours. Cause but it's coming out on HBO Max. This is, yes. So, so you can so watch a little it bit in of background. Installments. Correct. Yeah, a little bit of background for anybody who has not maybe followed the Justice League Snyder saga that had really happened in this movie. Buckle up, folks. Zack Snyder was on Justice League. Mm-hmm. His daughter committed suicide, so he stepped away. Supposedly. Allegedly. Supposedly. Not not that she not that she committed suicide, but that was the that, reason oh, he that, stepped okay. away. It's always been a rumor that he was fired. I did not prior know that. to okay. the. To I've always that heard that happening. that was that was just the reason he gave. Yeah. It. Okay. Um. So stepped away from the project. Josh Whedon was subbed in and finished the film basically, which was like ninety to ninety five percent done. Yeah, that's all. It it's very, it's always been up for debate. There's a lot of furor around yeah. what really happened on that movie. Yes. So yeah, basically a lot of a lot of turmoil over the movie. Sure. Justice League came out. I've not seen it, but I heard horrible things about it. I think it's it's fine. I, it's, overall, I've heard it's not. It's not good. Yeah. But anyway, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's not good. Yeah. And it, there's some horrific shots in there. It's just, it's nothing, really. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then recently, ever since the movie came out, people, fans of DC and Justice League or whatever, have been saying, released the Snyder Cut, saying they want Zack Snyder to show what his vision for the movie was, basically, before Correct. he stepped away from the project. With HBO Max coming out, right when they launched HBO Max, they announced the Zack Snyder Cut would be coming, um, so it's just going to be, reading up in the story, it is going to be 100% his, what what he filmed, mm-hmm. basically. Um, it's not, he said nothing. But he has to reshoot a bunch of stuff, because he needed like $60 million or whatever to like finish Is that off. what it is? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. um, he he said he said he needs he needs some more time to do some like VFX shots and stuff like that because it's interesting because it will be HBO technically finishing this cut of it it's not Warner Brothers anymore so that was kind of the right. wrangling that they had to do and why it's coming out on HBO Max hmm. uh, and that's why you're still getting the Pattinson Batman and that kind of stuff because HBO HBO is more or less taking over the Snyder version of it gotcha you know? gotcha yeah um, Ty. How do you feel about this? Uh, I'm down. Are you, are you excited for this? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Did you like um, Justice, Justice League at all or no? Uh, it, like Nathaniel said, it was okay. okay. It wasn't anything crazy. It's cool. I don't Batman... expect a lot from DC as far as movies go anyways. Right. Th- that, that's um, the thing. I it's... love a lot of their animated stuff, yeah, like yeah. on DC Universe. Like, by far beats anything that Marvel has for in that sure. area. Mm-hmm. For sure. But yeah, as far as live action goes... DC is just really not They're all the radar. Place. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably with um, Tyler and Nathaniel on this one. I mean, as for you, I don't think you're missing much having not seen the movie. I might just make um, the Snyder Cut. As my first I, I would totally recommend doing yeah, that. Because um, the, the original movie, it, it's not the greatest, I would say. No, it's, it's um, made by committee. It's got weird, it, it's tonally all over the place. Mm-hmm. The folks say stuff that doesn't make sense. No, no it, one's character motivation makes any it's bad. sense. It's wild. It's 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 watchable. It's, wild. it's watchable just for the kind of like wow, this is what we did with this. And I mean, there is certain points where we're like, wow, okay, it's kind of fun to see all these guys interacting together and stuff like that. But those are so few and far in between. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, not a fun movie, but a uh, funny movie. Since we're on um, DC, then where, where where are you guys putting that Justice League in the that DC catalog? I haven't seen all of the DC movies that they've done since. First one of this, I guess, would be Man of Steel is when they started this arc, kind of. Yeah. Sense. So I've seen Man of Steel, and I saw Batman v Superman. That's it? Okay. I haven't, I haven't seen Aquaman, I haven't seen Wonder Woman, I haven't seen Justice League. Wow. What, uh, what about you, Nathaniel? Um, I think Justice League's at the bottom, barely above Suicide Squad. Cause Suicide Squad. Oh, I saw Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad, yeah. Squad oh. pissed me off. That's another more disaster. Than, disaster. Than, literally, the first <laughs> 15 minutes were so... Great. Yeah, I agree. And then it just all went down. That's an insane story, too. We yeah. can get into it at another time on <laughs> the production on that movie. But yeah, Suicide Squad just made me so mad that I actually keep it below Justice League. But sure. I think the best movie they've actually made is actually Shazam. Shazam was which, like, really? No one so seen. I've never I've seen, seen Shazam. Yeah. It's on um, HBO Max. But is it really? Yeah. Okay. I know a lot I of people like were like Wonder Woman, and I was like, I didn't really care for Wonder Woman. A lot. I heard a lot of good things about Wonder Woman. I think, <laughs> I think Wonder Woman was really good. I think, I think so far my favorite has been Aquaman. By far. Aquaman's fun, too. Aquaman, was, I was in the theaters, and I was like, if I was 13, this would be my favorite It'd be movie. incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll have to give those a watch, because I know a lot of that. I'm pretty sure all of those movies are on HBO Max right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, there's really no excuse for me, but I'm going to probably wait on the Zip Snyder cut for Justice League. For sure, man. All right, and now our last news story for the day. Uh, this one is for Tyler. 
Amazon's The Boys renewed for third season. Before the second season even came out, right? It hasn't yeah. come out yet? Nope. Well, which is a good boat of confidence. That yes, it is. I'm sure they've pre-released it to some people, and those said people probably went a little bananas, and so they were like, yeah, you can absolutely clear this for a third season. Yep. And it's so here that they're getting an after show. Yes, yeah. Well. So Aisha Tyler is going to be hosting a, I forget what they called it, but it was like a behind behind the making or it was like inside the boys something like so that so the idea of this is like if you've seen the walking dead yep. they do like the talking yeah. dead yep. and, but I think this is the first time yeah. Amazon's done it yeah. right yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah. Yep. so it's just kind of like talking about the show and then I guess talking about making it uh, the process of making it as well um, and I, lo- I like Aisha Tyler she hasn't been doing a yeah, ton of stuff recently but um, did, does Amazon release the boys all at once or do they do scheduled they do I, scheduled Oh, they do? I'm pretty sure. Okay, yeah. I'm almost positive. The, kind of like the idea of an after show doesn't really work if you just Let throw it all on. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. the then everybody's just going to watch the show and not watch the other yeah. show. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty sure they release it. Sequentially? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I still have not seen The Boys, but it will probably be a show I'll watch somewhat soon, um, depending on it. I'm almost going to make it like a requirement before you come back to my house. <laughs> this is an apartment. That's probably be a, a good time though. for me to say I've never seen it either. Yeah. Tyler's a bigger <laughs> fan of it than I am. I think it's it's pretty good. Um, but there's some some I don't know. There's some stuff in there. I was just like, ah, this doesn't really do much for me. We but can there, fight about that later. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll knock around. Hundred percent. Yeah. Take yeah. it out. All right. Well, uh, did we want to do? Actually, we didn't watch the uh, teaser. No, we, we didn't. We, we don't got anything on the. I'm yeah, no, we're, no new trailer talk today. Trailer There's talk is trailers. closed. But it's okay, because we got a lot of new to streaming, because it's the first week, this is for the first week of August, um, which is usually going to be the busiest week for new streaming, because they all update monthly for the most part. Uh, Netflix, Nizza, A Knight's Tale. I see that, right up top, I'm in. Are, you, are we going to do a watch party with me, you, and uh, my brother? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, who just, who just had this, Hulu? I don't know. Where, yeah, someone did. I'm pretty we sure somebody something. just had this. Yeah, might have readily available. We watched it. We, we watched it at work on the Apple TV. <laughs> but maybe that's what we were thinking of. <laughs> yeah. That might be it. <laughs> uh, also, coming to Netflix is Hardcore Henry, which is 2016 or 17. Is the first person movie that was shot all in like a GoPro. Yeah, I've never um, seen it. I've never seen it either. I heard it was actually decent. It looks like a headache to me. It's yeah. a wild time. I don't know. I'm, I, yeah, I it's definitely it, shot a little bit differently. Yeah. I heard some people get like vertigo from it because yeah. they're just like, I can't do this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was actually pretty good. I, if it's coming to Netflix, I may give it a watch just because I like unique stuff like that. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park 3 and The Lost World Jurassic Park all coming to Netflix. Nathaniel, that one's for you. I, I got a lot of stuff coming to Netflix yeah. next next month. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, wait those, till we get to HBO, dude. Those periodically come on and off. Um, all good. If you've never seen Jurassic Park, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> go and watch it. It's incredible. Two is also fun. There's actually a really great scene in there involving a bus and the side of a cliff that's amazing. And three has some interesting ideas. Not necessarily the best one, but execution still, yeah. wasn't always well. But yeah, yeah, I, ideas. yeah. There's more horror <laughs> element. There's more there horror is, elements yeah. in three that are yeah. kind of fun that they play with a little bit more. Um, is that the one where they're in the pterodactyl cage? Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. is significantly the horror kind of. Yeah, like, and they and they get the, they're kind of being hunted by the spinosaurus constantly and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It's um, I like three. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. Amazon Prime is getting three ten to Yuma. Inception, which was on Netflix, I believe. Uh, Top Gun, which I actually have not seen and need to watch because uh, I want to. I'm interested in it. And you're it's writing, good. You're writing checks your body can't cash, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they're also getting Peanut Butter Falcon. Have you guys seen that? That's the one with Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Shia LaBeouf. Yep. I haven't even heard of that. What's that? One it's about? really good. It's um, Shia LaBeouf is it's in it's set in Florida, like the Everglades. Um, and he encounter he's kind of like a, on his own, kind of going job to job. Basically, he's like a fisherman, kind of like a boater, mm-hmm. um, and uh, encounters I believe his name is Zach, um, who has Down syndrome, who escaped from like a home for disabled for like disabled. Or he he was living in an old folks home because like in that area that was like the only place that could take him. Okay. Like because his par- I guess his parents died or whatever. He was basically left, so the state put him in like an old folks home. And he hates it there, so he ran off. He meets up with Shia LaBeouf, and it's kind of like their story together and how they like come together. Gotcha. It's really good, actually. Uh, okay. It came out, I believe, in 20, 2019. I believe it was last year. 
Um, I do recommend it for sure. Okay. It, it, it was pretty good. Okay. Hulu matching Amazon Prime also with 310 to Yuma and Top Gun. I don't know how that's possible, but I guess they're also getting those two. Um, and then HBO Max just killing it just killing the every game. time man. hbo i mean i know i shouldn't like hbo because they're at&t it's all it's all one giant corporation but like i can't be mad when they're giving me <laughs> all of the president's men have you guys seen that no oh, i have not that's mm-hmm. a classic uh for me because it's uh it's about uh the pentagon papers water gate scandal Water. sorry did i say it? yeah Watergate scandal what i what i don't know what the pentagon I don't papers know. are okay yeah the pentagon <laughs> papers uh Oh, okay, yeah, I haven't seen the post. Anyway, um, All the President's Men is a Watergate scandal with Woodward and Bernstein, and it's a movie I've seen multiple times because of journalism. Dustin uh, Hoffman and Al Pacino, if I'm not wrong. They might be. No one's Hoffman. Um, I believe Woodward's Hoffman, or Bernstein's Hoffman. Go ahead and check that out. I will, I will let you know. Yep. Uh, the Batman suite, basically. You got the 1989 Batman, Batman and Robin from 97, Batman Begins in 2005, The Dark Knight, Batman Forever, 95, and Redford. Batman Returns. Robert Redford. Ah. Sorry, Robert. Um, Al Pacino, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Batman uh, Returns, 1992. All come to HBO. Um, so that's good. They got Batman Begins and Dark Knight on there. They just need... Dark Knight Returns, and I can finally rewatch the trilogy there. Dark Knight Rises, you mean? Sorry, you're right. Return Rises. I don't know what I said. Returns? Yeah. Probably but there's a lot of returns going on. Yeah, there. too many. Um, have you seen all of the Batmans? I'm sure you have, Tyler. Yeah, I'm Blake. a huge Clooney fan. So, the ben- <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting to that. So, so Batman Forever and Batman Returns, those are the George Clooney ones. Though, yes. Right? Yeah. Are they both Clooney? One's Kilmer. Clooney only oh, did yeah, one. Yeah, Which yeah, one's yeah. Keaton? You're right. Uh, the first one, Batman '89, yeah. and Batman Returns, and then it was Clooney for or er, Kilmer for Batman Forever, which yeah. is the one with Joker and Rip and uh, yeah, that's one where Arnold Schwarzenegger is. Um, well, that's Batman Dr. and Robin. Freeze. That's Batman. And Robin. Okay, and I'm getting those movies. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah that's Mr. Though. Freeze, and that's that's Mr. Freeze. Clooney. Okay, they're commonly confused. Okay, yeah, there's a lot. It gets very camp. I love them. Yeah, I was thinking they, we should really go in on these. Yeah, they are okay. something that like a lot of people might think is a hard time to watch, but I have seen those still as a kid. And yeah, I hold them very near and dear to my heart. I've great. not seen Returns, and I've not seen Batman and Robin. Danny DeVito as the Penguin? Yeah, <laughs> Get out of town, yeah, yeah. bro. I've, I've Get out one. of town. Yeah. We're watching it. it. I'm down. <laughs> and then uh, to finish it off here, we got Blade Runner, The Final Cut, uh, coming to HBO, and then Driving Miss Daisy, a classic I have not seen. It's good. Um, Elf, even though it's the middle of July, um, is coming. And then you got The Fugitive, Jojo Rabbit, which I have not seen and plan to watch. Jojo Rabbit is really good. I yeah, like that I haven't seen it either. I, 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 really like I really need to see that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good one. Kung Fu Panda and Kung Fu Panda 2. And uh, Wedding Crashers and Yes Man. All coming to HBO Max. They're killing it, guys. That That's such a good suite right yeah, there. Yeah, they've got a really good library. They really do. Yeah, they, they always do. Every time we do this list, um, I feel like they're on top. If I had to pick between the five streaming services that we have on here, I would probably pick HBO. Oh, if I had to pick yeah, between Yeah, it's just the, it's the variety. It, yeah, it's the variety. Wild. It's the amount of classics they have. Yeah, they've got a lot of really good old movies. Yeah. <laughs> they really do. Yeah, when I saw The Fugitive on there, that's the Harrison Ford one. I don't uh-huh. know if you guys have seen that. Oh, yeah. that I love that movie. I, I, really I don't know why. I haven't seen it. Those really? are like haven't the haven't movies that like my dad used to like sit down and be like, yeah. you have to watch these. And I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that and Die Hard on Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then Disney Plus, in case you guys are wondering, nothing new coming for the first week. There is some stuff for the second week of August, so I'll cover that on the next episode. But right. uh, for the first week, you got nothing new coming. Oh, uh, you're... Uh, what we're watching, guys? What have you guys been up to the last week? Nathaniel, Tyler? Um, Nathaniel and I watched Old Guard. Yeah, the Old Guard. You guys watch it. How was that? It was um, good. Yeah, it okay. wasn't like... Su- I only have two pet peeves with it. Okay. One, the music. Completely out yeah, of nowhere, far left field. None of the music well, actually matches it. Like? It's integration in the scenes and the actual song choice itself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like where they're like at weird in the film. Pop. Yeah, and then like okay. how. Yeah, and then the music selection for that scene. Just that's odd. outlandish. Um, they, they had that problem with uh, Six Underground though too. That was yeah. like that was like I a Samsung yep. commercial. It was like anything that had been on a Samsung demo was in that movie. Yes. <laughs> okay. And then. Um, the choreography of some of the fights, like she, like why do you have to roll around on the ground to grab somebody else's magazine to put it in your gun to throw to somebody else to shoot somebody and then pull out your like it just seemed like overly shit. done. Yeah, and they could have simplified it more and it would have looked way better. Yeah, but other than that, I thought it was great. 
Writing was the thing I liked most about it for sure. It it's well it's, okay. uh, it's, it's based off a comic book series. It's actually off a comic series that's um, Greg Rucker and Ed Brubaker. So the guys that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. with uh, Got- Gotham Central. Um, yeah, whatever that, that coming that, off the, the new Batman. HBO yeah, TV yeah. Series, so that yeah. they he they wrote or uh, one of them I forget which one wrote the script for this, and it's based off his own comic. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So the. The kind of plot revolves around these folks that are immortal and kind of how they've gone. These warriors that are immortal that have kind of gone through history and what they've done and that kind of thing, but they take it in not necessarily the places that you would normally think it's going to. Not totally out of left field that you're like, I don't like this. This takes me out of the movie, but it subverts your expectations for the most part. That's definitely the most interesting portions of it. The yeah, the action was decent. It was a little bit like overly showy, I would say. The yeah. editing was pretty on point as well the sound mixing or the sound uh, inserts uh, notwithstanding but overall good Netflix movie worth a watch mm-hmm. um, don't by any means feel like you have to go see it or anything yeah. like that I wasn't too interested from what I saw of it so I don't know if I'll check it out But I, I think it's the best of the Netflix movies that I've seen so far, far. Oh, sure. yeah of that kind of caliber of that kind of caliber I think I think the Five Bloods is the is the one that sticks out to me. That's a little bit different on there because sure. I took a lot from that movie. But overall, of the extractions of the of the uh, the six on six underground, yep. the Spencer Confidentials, yeah. this one's I think the best out of. Those. Okay, that's a good. I feel like gotcha. that's a pretty good yeah. recommendation. There. Yeah. yeah. What else is that? Is that been it? Uh, I only have one other thing, and it it's very like out of left field. But I came out of my room one time this week, and Nathaniel's like. You have to watch this phone commercial. Oh yeah, <laughs> because I've I forgot think, about this. Because I think LG wants you to have sex with this phone. Yeah, they want you to bang this phone, dude. <laughs> so <laughs> he pulled it up. We watched it on the TV, and I could not pull myself away from it. They make this thing look so sexy. The music, <laughs> like, like it was wild. It's, a, it's an acoustic <laughs> cover of. Um, Oh, what is it? I gotta find the clip now. We're we're doing this on live. Um, it's the LG Velvet listeners. So if you want to go on, online and, and on YouTube and look up the LG Velvet, or it's introducing the LG Velvet. It is the most wild commercial I've ever seen. It's like it's so overproduced, and their whole goal it's is for you to so just. Good. It's it right. looks like they're introducing a new Maserati. Yeah. Yeah, it's what it's a cover. It's a cover <laughs> it's a of, uh, of um, these are my favorite things. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> How long is this? It's like two Three minutes. minutes. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's a while. We don't have to watch the whole thing. They're, they're disgusting. But, but go no, like skip ahead though. Skip ahead to, towards yeah. the end because it starts getting. This? No, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, go watch it. It's it's the craziest it's thing incredible. I've ever seen. All right, I'm gonna pause that because I don't know how much listeners appreciated that. Um, I might edit some of that out. We'll see. Just so it sounds <laughs> decent. But um, yeah, that's uh, just it's the video on YouTube is called Introducing the LG Velvet. That's all you have to. That's all you have to search. I 100% agree. I'm I just, don't, I'm, am I supposed to take this photo on a date? Like, <laughs> at the end of it, it was one of those things where like I was watching YouTube and the ad just came up and it hit skip ad and I was like I was like on my own phone or something mm-hmm. so I didn't hit it for a second and then like about a minute in I like looked up and I was kind of like <laughs> what am I watching? What is happening? Here? Do they want me to? Do they want me to bang this phone? They do. It was incredible. I uh, wow, I'm speechless. That's You're great. welcome. Yeah, yeah so that's that. what we were watching. Um, go find out, guys. I definitely recommend going on watching that. Just the it's going, it's going on the entropy list later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it'll pop up on Letterbox, but I'll just make an insert. Straight to number one. Yeah, straight to number one. Uh, is that it? Nathaniel, you been watching uh, I'm trying to think if I, if I had anything else in there that I was watching. I've been watching Kingdom, uh, if anyone hasn't seen that Netflix. yet. Yeah, that's on Netflix. It, uh, it's a show about an uh, MMA gym where it's being run by a guy. If you've ever seen Warrior, the uh, the coach in that is plays basically the same character. It came out a few years ago. It's really it's very soapy and kind of melodramatic, but it's pretty good. Um, other than that... I can't think if we I watched any movies or anything like that. I don't think so. It was just the old guy. Yeah. Just yeah. those. Yep. All right. Blake? All right. Any closure um, porn this week? 
<laughs> no, man, no. I, I haven't watched any Eli Roth movies in a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, you, you, you keep making fun, sir. You haven't experienced a good one yet. No, I think, he hasn't seen any yeah, of the Hostels. He hasn't, he hasn't, yeah, you you haven't seen Hostel. Have, have you, you seen, seen any of the Saws? Saws? No. Do you haven't seen a single one? No. Oh, Saws man. don't start very, the stars don't start very torture porny, but they get it by the yeah. end. Yes. Yeah, um, the Hostel ones, like, hit it. High Tension, right right that's another good oh, one. Oh, yeah, it is. High Tension, um, Hills Have Eyes. There's some good ones in there. See, you're you're missing out a few, man. We can take a, um, no pun intended, a torture porn sure, journey. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll go on a quick jaunt down torture porn. Lane. <laughs> but uh, it, as far I mean, as I just watch some regular porn with that LG. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, so as far as what I've been watching, man, um, not much. I mean, I started up uh, the Bernie Mac show just kind of for my late night. The Bernie Mac show, yeah, Amazing. just for my late night uh, kind All of right. giggles to go to sleep. Um, <laughs> Show I grew up on watching oh, it yeah. once in a while, right? Uh, outside of that, I watched John Tucker Must Die this week. That's that great. Um, that's probably my favorite chick flick, man. Wow. Without a doubt, that's my. We uh, are that's, going, my that's a good bold, idea. That's my we bold will take. have a second oh, episode a on flick? our favorite that's chick flick. Oh, mine's John Tucker Must Die, hands down. That's great. That'd be a fun one. Yeah, that would be good. Um, so, yeah, I watched that. And then the only other thing I watched, which I watched three days ago, I watched uh, Pitch Black. I don't know if you guys have seen that one. The it's Vin uh, Diesel. Yeah, the Vin Diesel the one. The Chronicles of Riddick. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's the prequel to yeah. those Chronicles. I right heard. Ones. I heard about Pitch Black on like a little league baseball team, and someone was like, <laughs> "Was like, you guys should go see the Chronicles of Riddick." And I was like, "I don't know what that is." He's like. Oh, it's the sequel to Pitch Black. I was like, I've never seen Pitch Black. Like, you haven't lived. <laughs> I like, yeah. I'm 11, kid. Okay. <laughs> I was probably yeah. like eight. But yeah, that, that's one of my um, childhood memory movies, yeah. you know. So I sat down and watched that the other day. Um, ironically enough, Life Comes Full Circle, the director for that is a David uh, Tui. And he's ironically the director of The Fugitive. I just looked yeah, that up we and go. we just found that's that great. on HBO Max. Uh-huh. Oh. You know, Vin Diesel came back to the fr- uh, the Fast and Furious franchise so that he could get the rights to the Chronicles of Riddick so that he could make the Riddick, Riddick. Riddick, the third Riddick movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his his cameo in the end of Tokyo Drift is because he wanted to get the rights back for that. That sounds like really, Vin Diesel. Yeah. It's a great cameo too. That's yeah, awesome. It is. I mean, if he didn't want to do that, I don't think the Fast would become what it's become nowadays. No, another franchise I've not seen a single one. Of. Oh. You haven't seen Fast? Oh yeah, man, not. they're fun. Oh, oh my. That's just Gosh, I just never was like e- even even like my my big dumb master's degree brain turns off and I'm like it's all about family man <laughs> <laughs> family well, and Coronas so where, where are those streaming are they streaming anywhere oh, I, I got I got all eight on Blu-ray oh my God. I'll let you borrow them uh, they, they used to have. A couple of them about the Netflix. first two on Netflix yeah, yeah. and the yeah, first two are are pretty have you seen good. Point Break I can watch those the original one yeah no. You saw the? Did you see the I remake? See, I don't know why I asked that. <laughs> I haven't seen. Like, I'm sorry. I haven't seen either of them. I uh, know the concept of it. Yeah, it, first one's basically Point Break, but with cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one's incredible. Yeah, the first it one's is. great. I don't. I don't even mind the second one. Um, there's a uh, few uh, funny the, one-liners in there. The Too Fast, Too Furious gets a lot of flack. I think it's great. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Which one's Tokyo Drift? Tokyo Drift. That's the third one. Technically, the third Dude, one. I love, yeah. I love Tokyo. That I, came out. Okay. It's wild. Yeah. yeah. We'll go into a fast. We'll do a fast episode someday. Yeah, sure. All those movies get, get jumbled. Like once you get past yeah. like six, they're all like the same movie to me. Yeah, I have it, to distinguish them by the ending. Of the yeah, 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 yeah. There's because it always it always ends on a set piece, mm-hmm. and whether or not the rocks in it. That's how you <laughs> could, is the rock a good guy or a bad guy in this one? We we can He's find out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I've been uh, continuing my watch of the Avatar. Where are you up to now? Uh, just finished season one. Okay. It's. It's becoming a bit of a grind, a wow. little bit. I, I, I'm going to give the second season a watch. I think I will finish it out eventually just because it's pretty short. It's mm. not a ton, but it's just like I've not been enjoying it as much as I kind of want to, but we'll see We'll see where it goes. I'm All sure right. you said it picks up right at season two. So Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, yeah. from season two, uh, you're going to see a pretty big jump in quality good, overall, good. I yeah. think. Hopefully. And then Legend of Korra, I saw, is coming soon to Netflix, I believe. Mm-hmm. It is. So hopefully that'll be good. Be we actually to see. had some speculation about this. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because Netflix is notorious for buying these shows and then either releasing them and then coming up with like their own version to add mm-hmm. on to it. I think they might be doing Well, they, they're well, making the ads. Yeah, movies, so everyone's, so, yeah. yeah, that's the, everyone's like first thought is like, well, they had to do it so they could do the movie. But it would not surprise me the way that. Netflix is doing all the anime that they are doing that if they did uh, another season of Avatar because 
these are the same people that write the Dragon Prince, which is like one of the biggest animes that you can find on Netflix right now for like the new generation of kids. Um, and it's written by the same people, and it's actually really well done. So I'm pretty sure I they would did. not be surprised if they did another one. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure they had like a hand in the reboot of the Voltron stuff too yeah. when yep. that came out, which mm-hmm. that was really good as well. It was awesome. Yeah, so I, I agree. I don't think it would be surprising to see a third no. season come out of this, which would be interesting. Yeah. I'll be interested to see how you take Takora too, because I actually have a suspicion that you might like it a little bit better. Like more. Most yeah. people do. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I think I'm going to have to finish it out just because I committed you know, yeah. and, and it's one of those shows I feel like I should watch. Um, but the last little bit of uh, last little bit of it, I, I have been. It I really it, think so. you'll. I really think you'll, you'll you'll enjoy it at the end of this. Yeah. So Aishi, I heard you're taking a, another run at True Detective. Another run. <laughs> this, is my, taking, this is my first. Taking run. a first run at this True is my Detective. First run. Sorry. Off of my suggestion, by the way. Is that is that what uh, happened? I don't want to give credit to anybody. You know. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying the record show so. last week. I suggested this in my in I'm my, in my must watch TV that episode plus. right now. So yeah, I think credit goes to Nathaniel. Okay, thank you. Credit goes to Nathaniel. I'll, I'll thank stop. you. Thank you. I will, I will. give it out. So yeah. So I, the other show? night I was like, I, we were talking about this earlier. How you're like, do I want to watch a uh, two hour mo- or like a one hour TV show or yeah. ten six sixty minutes or uh, Ch- six ten minute episodes or whatever? Yeah, YouTube. Uh, YouTube stealing your mind, folks. Exactly. Um... I was in one of those scenarios where I was like, I don't want to watch a movie. Hmm. I don't want to watch Avatar, which is like my like shorter show that I was. Sure. I was like, I wish there was something in between. And I was like, oh yeah, TV shows. Television, exist. folks. I haven't, yeah, I haven't <laughs> watched a, a meteor TV show in a little bit. I took a little bit of a break from that and mm. watched some anime and other stuff. Um, so I was like, I think I could go for uh, a new show. And I hopped on HBO Max and I saw True Detective. I was like, Nathaniel really wants me to watch this. I'm like, all right. Let's go. And I am in, Nathaniel. I've watched six episodes in, I think, four or five days. Okay, so you got two left. So I got two left. Yeah. The, I have gotten to the twist. Uh-huh. And I am in love. Yeah, I just, I love this show so, so much. It's so good. It's McConaughey great. and Woody Harrelson are fucking phenomenal. Yeah. McConaughey especially is yeah. really, really good. Yeah, this is right around the time of the McConaissance. This was what, what kind of brought it back on, I think. Um... He's he's incredible in it. Woody Harrelson's really good in it. Woody too. Harrelson's really good. Michelle Monaghan's awesome in Which it. Which one is she? She's the Woody Harrelson's wife. Okay. Um, she's really great in it. The all the supporting cast. It looks incredible. It does look really good. The Carrie Joji Fukunaga absolutely murders it yes. on there. Yes. Uh, the, they do a really cool grain um, adjustment. Yes. On the so when they're filming in '95, there's a pretty decent. Some mm. you can see the grain kind yeah. of. Um, it still looks good, but it's like it, they do add a little bit of. Effect. Yeah, because the the story is told over three periods. Three periods of time, so it's yeah. modern day. Uh, a little bit, they cut pretty often to modern day yeah. where it's Woody Harrelson and. Uh, McConaughey basically narrating. Yeah, that's 2011. Yes. Um, and then switches back to 95. There's like a grain shift on there, so they add a little bit of a graininess. And then mm-hmm. they go back to 2002. Yeah. Uh, which is less grain. And so, yeah, uh, so the really smart shifts there. Yeah. Um, really well shot. Uh, the, the cinematographies are nice. They do have which, some really Which nice means, shots. yeah, you would have gotten through Who Goes There, which is the episode with the really long take that's about eight minutes and yes. ends the episode. Yes, that I needed yeah. to bring up. That was an incredible shot. Yeah, it's 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 incredible. It quickly became very famous for the, how oh my God. Um, the tension just builds throughout. And McConaughey's just like, don't shoot, don't shoot. Yeah. All right, okay. And then it just, oh my. Yeah, it's God. about an eight minute extended take that just, that follows an action scene uh, it's that's so a, good. at the climax of the episode. That's really, really, uh, and and, really and shit gets real. Yeah, like like it is not. It is not like it, it is not like a regular tension action scene. Like it goes off and it's it feels really impactful. It yeah, was, it was really crazy. So every season of it kind of has a different vibe to it. That one's very southern gothic detective. Which Louisiana. I like a lot. Yeah, like a lot. season two is much more this kind of L.A. story, like kind of crime mob, um, almost like seventies exploitation okay. um, feel to it, which was at the time just this dramatic shift. To the, and a different kind of mystery, and fans pretty did not take to it the best, I would say, overall. Um, but then season three came out, and season three is this much more kind of meditative, almost um, the kind of green room, the 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 prisoner style, uh, oh, this down and dirty Ozark tale. Okay. Um, uh, that's also really really interesting as well. So I, think I like Marsha Ali a lot. 
Yeah, Mahershala Ali is incredible. And it's Steven Dorff, who um, not, not a lot of people know, but if he's the main villain in Blade from the, the <laughs> oh, 90s. From the, from the first yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And he's been kind of kicking around for a while now. He gives it an incredible performance okay. in the third season. It's absolutely... He got snubbed on everything last year. Uh, but yeah, overall... True Detective Season 1, I think, is the best, but um, it's a, overall it's a great very, series. Very you guys might have just sold me on this, man. I might have to... Yeah, I wasn't really interested until Dude. you guys just had I watch it bit. once a year. I legitimately, okay. once a year, I will, I, I will watch I honestly, Season because, 1. Oh, my God. I need to... Re- like, as, so, the, the twist happens, mm-hmm. which I don't like saying, but no. we kind of have to discuss. Um, and so, I can't wait to go back and rewatch it and see all the things you don't notice. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. I. I know. Uh, yeah. We won't. We won't spoil that. And I haven't but, finished, so I don't know where yeah. this ends. But I can already tell it. It's not where you much. think it's going to be. I can oh, tell I'm you sure. that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So that was. Uh, that's been what we're watching. Uh. Oh, you I got, got two you, more on you, here. Oh, you got some other stuff too. I got two more on here. Okay. Let questions. her rip, Tater Jim. Um, yeah, I've talked a lot now. I'm gonna shut up. Uh, I forgot about. to put this on my what 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 I was watching last week. Um. But I watched it. So I watched it like last week. But it was Palm Springs. It's the new Andy Samberg movie with um, the chick from How I Met Your Mother. I think my brother and his Jeez. girlfriend said they were going to watch this. It was which chick? Uh, the mother. Oh, okay. It's so from Kristen Milotti. Yes. Um, not Robin. Okay. Yeah, so she she's in it. It's it's them as the two main characters. And J.K. Simmons is in it, too. Is it a Lonely Island movie? I don't believe so. It's on Hulu. It's, it was straight to Hulu. Okay. Um, it looked like it was produced by Lonely Island had that kind of production value or, or it kind of had a similar look to it as Popstar Never Stopping or Pop, Never, yeah, never yeah. Stop Never Stopping <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. was the title of which that. was an underrated movie if you guys uh, haven't yeah. seen uh, that yeah, I yeah. thought it was incredible yeah uh, if you didn't get a chance to watch that that's a really good one yeah. <laughs> um, but it's like a if you haven't seen it or you know the idea behind it it's basically like a Groundhog's Day scenario where he's in a time loop oh okay um but it's Palm Springs. Yes. Okay. Um, it's a, so it's he's in a time loop, and then basically, uh, what's the actor's name? Uh, Kristen Milioti. Yes, she gets stuck in the time loop too, and so is J.K. Simmons. So there, there it's uh, okay. Um, it it, t- it takes place the day of a wedding, basically. So that's kind of like your setting. Got it. Um, it was it was really good. It was a nice story. Um, it was pretty funny for the most part. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of good laughs in there. Um, and I liked it, so I would definitely recommend it. I feel like there's been a lot of those time loop movies recently. There is, there is well, that one. They Death did Day. Happy Death Day, yeah. Happy Death Day to you. And then yeah. the there was that Russian doll on Netflix as well. That's that was like the same one around, kind of thing. Um, they've just been seeming to go back to this yeah. Yeah. as well a couple times. Yeah. It but doesn't those... handle the time loop stuff pretty well, but it's a comedy and it, it is pretty funny. Sure. Yeah. And, and that's kind of what you run into with a lot of those time loop Groundhog, Groundhog Day ones. Uh, they have to be somewhat funny, right? Because like, you can only right. even like the Happy Death Day to use. Right? Yeah. It's in horror, oh, but yeah. it's still like kind of it's yeah, kind of like funny. It's real teenage campy, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's good. I like it as well. But you got to add some of those kind of humor yeah. elements in. And it I, I want to correct myself. I, they they handle the time loop. They don't handle it well as in like a reason for it or like a way to get out necessarily. Like there's not like a message behind it, but mm-hmm. like they play with the time loop a lot. Okay. So. Um, as you kind of have yeah, that's always movie. everyone's favorite parts of those movies. Anyways, is the montage bit where you see the person mm-hmm. yeah, killing and, themselves oh, in a variety and, of and, different and, ways. And they have plenty. Of Don't worry, they're in there. Uh, I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a comedy to watch. It's Edge of Tomorrow is another one. Yeah, the, the, oh, the yeah, sci-fi version earlier. of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting concept. Um, yeah, it's always fun. I mean, it's a, it's a good one to try out every now and again. And stuff. Yeah, and the and the last thing I'll, I'll mention uh, um, that I've thrown on the past couple nights is Burt Kreischer. He's a stand-up oh, okay. comedian. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys are into stand-up at all. Um, I'm pretty big into it. My brother um, is into it as well. The one I like or the one I don't like? The one you're fighting. Okay. Yeah. Um, God. He's, uh, he's a funny so, man. Yeah, Burt Kreischer. He's got three specials on Netflix. All of them, I would say, are really, really good. Mm. All three of them are just laugh out loud. Just, yeah, he's a just going at it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would definitely recommend if you're looking for something maybe shorter, like in that hour range, mm-hmm. and you're looking for a good laugh, Burt Kreischer on Netflix. He's got three specials that are all really, really good. Um, right. So yeah, that's that's it for okay. me. I'm what we're watching. Um, let's get into the main segment. We're very far into this podcast, probably later than we should be, but I don't really mind. Yeah, we like to talk. Yeah. You know. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, blind spotting. So Nathaniel comes to me today and goes, hey, since it was your recommendation, you're the one that's seen it before, and then you three are the new ones who uh, haven't seen it yet. Yeah, that we're fresh. 
your fresh, fresh meat for the for blind spotting. Uh, you would hand over the review segment to me a little bit. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. You, you spread your wings and review here and, and lead us down this merry path. It's not a very merry path if you watch this movie. <laughs> you'll, you'll probably I don't know, know about that. It, it's got a somewhat happy ending, yeah. but uh, it deals with some very heavy shit, as we'll get to. Um, so yeah, we'll do our quick little non-spoiler, seg- uh, non-spoiler summary, and we'll give you a little synopsis there. Then we will give us our impressions and binary yes or no, or recommend or don't recommend review. Uh, and then we'll have a clear and definite uh, spoiler mark where we are just going to go full spoilers and assume that you've read the, uh, watched the movie. Um, all right, so the IMDb summary is one sentence, and it just says, While on probation, a man begins to reevaluate his friendship with his volatile best friend. Yeah. Um, I would... That's pretty spot that's on. That's pretty good. I would, I would say that's, that's the, a yeah. linear, very um, linear it's story. Very, yeah, that's a very, it's one sentence, but I feel like that does a good, pretty good job. Yeah. The, the, the story is much bigger than that. The story <laughs> takes place over David Diggs' his main character, Collins, um, over his last three days and his first day off of probation. Um, so that's kind of, that adds a little bit more. It's not just while on probation. It's, it's, it's him at the end of his probation trying to, and dealing with, um, dealing with the end of it and then dealing with how he's going to live with it because something they talk about is that he's now a convicted felon. Correct. Initial impressions from you, all three of you guys since you guys are the first time seeing it. Yeah, I really uh, I really enjoyed it. It was a good movie. Um, I thought it was fun, actually. I actually had a good time with it. I thought it was, mm-hmm. I thought it was really, it's really funny in parts. Um, it does have a lot of good There's a, like, kind of an absurd element to it. Um... And I like that it just kind of continues asking you questions the whole time. Yeah. And doesn't give you any really easy answers. Uh, but yeah, that, so, big, I like it from me. Ty? Uh, I thought it was great. Uh, I remember sitting down on the couch with the and being like, I really <laughs> want this movie to be just dog shit because it was Adam's pick. Yeah, just because it'd, be, uh, it'd be funny to bag on, bag on Adam a little bit. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I was, I was very, very impressed. Huge message. Uh, that's a really a great way to put it, that it just kind of keeps you asking questions, mm-hmm. uh, and you don't really get the answers you want to hear, but it's real answers, and they're they're really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, I think it was an awesome movie. Billy? Uh, same here, man. I mean, I, first impressions, I like it. Would I recommend it to somebody? Absolutely. Sure. Um, there's a good message. Uh, movies like this, I mean, it, all, it always kind of hits... It, it, they always kind of hit it on the head, right? It is, as long as it has a good runtime and the acting seems to be really good, and the the I would say the the plot's pretty well, um, but they definitely how would I say this? I would say they they definitely could have done it a little longer where you could see a little bit more from the characters, but I would I'd look. It is it. a short movie. It's only like it's only like an hour thirty minutes. minutes. It's an hour thirty yeah. seven. Um, so definitely had some time to play with if they wanted to add more. So. I would agree with you on that. I think they could have played it out a lot, a lot longer, but I, I still like what we got. Yeah, absolutely. Um, personally, if you didn't miss it on, I think it was two po- or three podcasts ago, two weeks mm-hmm. ago, um, I saw this movie, and it, I saw it the day after we recorded our top ten movie episodes. Uh, sorry, top ten movies episode. I saw it the day after, and it immediately made it onto that list at number six. Uh, so I, I really like the movie. Um, I will get into a little bit more why later but i think it does have a very good message i think you put it perfectly that keeps asking questions and it gives you some answers but they're just not necessarily answers that are easy to digest easy to implement and Mm -hmm. easy to just kind of put onto the world if you know what i mean um or if that makes sense so yeah uh binary recommendation i would 100 percent recommend it it's on hbo max nizza yeah i recommend ty absolutely blake said he'd already give it give it a watch all right yeah so definitely go check that out um if you, if you would have HBO Max, I don't know why you wouldn't, since they're amazing. But. Yeah, and this is uh, there's a lot of spoilers in here, guys, so I do recommend you go watch it before uh, you listen in. Uh, yeah, this yeah. is definitely one of those movies that you, if you really are curious and want to go watch it, do not listen to this. Yeah. Because it, we'll put, it ruins uh, everything. We'll put timestamps in the uh, episode's notes so you know when we're done talking about it. If you want to hear us at the end, you know, chat and be friends. And sure, yeah, I can start doing that. Be good. Be good guys. Yeah. Big but. brain thought. All right. So spoilers. Um, 
I'll fill in the rest of the plot a little bit. Yeah, I was gonna say there's yeah. still a lot to go on. <laughs> still you can't, to go on. Yeah, there's there's a lot like you can't so, yeah, start do, spoiling stuff for pretty early quick, in this movie. I'll be to do the quick synopsis, the rest of the synopsis. Uh, pretty early on in the movie, David Diggs' character Collins witnesses a police shooting um, while at a stoplight. Yeah, I forgot that that didn't even happen. Yeah, too. Um, and then it's about him uh, dealing with what he saw, dealing with the fact, and then he finds out that the man who was shot was also just a convicted felon with a gun on him. Yeah. Um, that was like all that happened. That was the altercation that took place that led to his shooting. Um, and that's him kind of having that fact hit him that he is soon to be in the same exact scenario as that guy and he's going to have to figure out how to live with it. And it's kind of him coming to grip, grips with that. His best friend, um, was his best friend? Miles. Miles, yep. Uh, played by Raphael Casal. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe David Divi Diggs, best friend in real life, too. Um, yeah, they wrote it together. They wrote it together, yeah. Um, so. They, um, it, it's their relationship playing out as well, because eventually, uh... Yeah, there's really two stories going there's, on. Yeah, there's kind of two stories going on. There's, there, there's... Which is part of the movie. Yeah, the, the witness of the murder and kind of David questioning his place in Oakland as it kind of grows and moves forward, and then his relationship with Miles as well, who, and the, how their relationship is going to change as, as they try and grow and move forward mm-hmm. as well. And yeah, so it's basically Collins figuring out how the world, uh, trying to get, come to the grasp with how the world sees him, even though that's not how he feels himself. Right. Basically. Um, and, and it's also played out through his relationship with his girlfriend, uh, ex girlfriend, Val, mm-hmm. um, which I thought that storyline was really good mm-hmm. um, and kind of helped play into the overall message at the end. So yeah, I, is that good enough plot summary for the rest of the yeah, week? Yeah, I, I would say that's would pretty, say so. There's a lot Pretty of small details, ahead, yeah. of course, yeah. that I could get into, but um, I think that's about all I'll say. Again, I mean, you just listen to it, the spoiler part of it, but give this movie a watch, um, so hopefully you know what we're talking about and referencing and stuff like that. Uh, who wants to start it off here? Nizza? Do you want to just go to uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I can talk a little bit. I... Uh, <clears throat> I really liked uh, a lot of it. I thought the the I thought the I don't like the name. I think the name's dumb. Exactly. I think I think I think her her explanation of the re- of the name in in relation to the vases was probably the, not my favorite bit of the movie. It was the part mm-hmm. that felt the most rote. It, okay. fe- it, yeah. it felt it felt true. It yeah. felt like a. a What's the word I'm looking for? Literature-y. Um, okay. More kind of that. Wow, that was an awesome sentence. Um, I, I, I know it's good, but, <laughs> but it's I more prose. It's yes. prosaic uh, yeah. rather than rather than the rest of the film, which feels so flowy and and very natural and very. It's it's you know particularly Miles and Colin. Um, you know their banter back and forth is oftentimes sprinkled with these spoken spoken word bits as well. So there's this kind of natural flow to it, and that was just one area where no, I felt sorry, I don't it wanna, just really slowed down. Yeah, I I want to defend that a little bit. Not I I, I do agree with you that it did feel a little prose. I yeah. didn't really get that as much um, because I feel like the his dialogue with his ex girlfriend is mm-hmm. very is much more serious, and much more well spoken than his dialogue with Miles. Just because Miles is supposed to be more of the street kind of, and it has more of a street lingo, whereas yeah, his no. ex girlfriend is studious, is in college, and has a yeah. Say job I don't have any, I don't have any problems with with the way that they're speaking and the and kind of their language well, I'm with just each saying other. That's why stuff like that. Yeah, I'm are just, you just saying just I'm, like the? What I'm just saying the itself. the delivery itself the and delivery, ca- okay. the delivery itself and the content of it. It's okay. like okay, this is the exposition point. This is the message. Oh, gotcha. it, it's a it's it was a, a little heavy handed. No, not necessarily no. even that. It's okay. a film. It's a film that hits the, its messages on the head and it and it and it has different messages throughout it that it is very open with and very on the nose with. And I'm fine with that. I think it does a good job with that. I think it's restrained in those moments where a lot of weaker films are not. But the point the the. One of those points is when he, she's delivering this kind of speech on what the phrase blind spotting means mm-hmm. to her and how it relates to her. And because it is already this kind of heightened reality moment, the rest of the film, which is so much more natural and kind of um, very almost just, just is committed to its naturalism and, and, the, and not realism in, in a way, but it's, it's, it's di- it far less dialogue heavy. Um, 
her kind of speech just feels overly arch and out of place was all I was saying on there. That was a long winded way of getting around to it. But, um, (laughs) but yeah, so that's, that's kind of my thoughts. I uh, kind of wraps it up there overall, any issues I had with it. I thought it was a little bit on the nose in some points. I thought it was, um, but it mostly overcame that just because I really care about the two characters. I really enjoy their interactions with one another. They feel real. They're so damn charming. They're, um, you know, I think both of them are just have that great music to them, like a, a way of moving and a, and a musicality and everything that they do. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of it overall. I just think, and in, 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 except for a couple sparks where it gets a little bit um, um, overly showy with its messages, I would say, which I mostly forgive it for. Um, I think it, it's great. I'll be interested to see how it feels on a rewatch because the plot, I think, is a little meandering and a little bit kind of um, not. It, uh, there, a lot of the, a lot of the film actually works on tension, and I don't know that the that that tension will be held the second time I see it, right? Because it's not plot based tension; it's a it's right. event based tension. Yeah. So I will say on my rewatch. I agree. It definitely happened where mm-hmm. I, I wasn't as into it yeah. um, as a first watch. I still it didn't move. It didn't get out of my top ten list because yeah. or anything like that. Because that first that first watch was because so the experience impactful. of the first watch. Yeah, it, and um, yeah. from my rewatch, I will say it definitely felt shorter. And you're right, there wasn't as much tension building because I, I know how it ends. Yeah. Um, and I was so much. I was looking forward to rewatching that ending because he's the ending the monologue. If you only almost want to yeah. call that mm-hmm. is a rap. A freestyle rap, yeah. um, and I missed it a lot the first time I watched it. Sure. Um, so giving a rewatch I, helped me in that in that sense. Um, but you're right; it, it does lose attention a little bit. It does it does lose its purpose almost because you already know the ending? But yeah, I, I, I think it's just. But it, it does serve the purpose still really well. Yeah, it'll, well. it'll. I would imagine it feels a little bit more meandering, a little, mm-hmm. a little bit like it's a little bit looser, just because like yeah, it's not. Yeah. it's not one overarching plot that they're always working towards. It's kind of these events through his day, mm-hmm. uh, his last few days. It's the day in the life of and that kind of thing, and what those what those are saying for him. So yeah, yeah. I've just talked a lot. Someone else talk now, sure. please. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think there was a, a lot of good stuff that happened here. Um, obviously, the ending uh, freestyle flow that he goes on on the officer uh, was just incredible. Um, that's probably one of the biggest moments. That that's the, the biggest moment in the movie by yeah, far. I mean, mm-hmm. there, there, my, remember my first watch? And there's just like I don't know if he's gonna shoot or not. And every time he's pointing that gun, I didn't. I because there's so much guns in rap nowadays, yeah. mm-hmm. and it, or in trap music especially. Um, so I didn't know if he was just going to try to make it part of the song and he was just doing a lot of stuff like there was a lot of tension and that, that, I think that's part of why I miss it, missed so much of what he was saying on my first sure. watch of it right. um, is because I was so engaged on what the fuck is he about to do because yeah. I could because at that point with his character I had seen all the mental shit he was going through I had seen there was no telling what he did yeah and, and, and it was such an interesting scenario to put those characters that character in where it's like oh he has a chance to give uh, or to like give justice to the the guy he saw get shot by this mm-hmm. cop, or and and then just police or black shootings in general, stuff like that. So I, I thought that scene was very well played out. So sorry, to continue. No, no, you're good. Um, yeah, and like obviously there's this big struggle of him having to to deal with this being a black male uh, stereotype in Oakland, uh, and it's it's great because right before they lead up to like the the climax of the movie, him and Miles go through this argument in this alleyway. And then you get to see it from Miles' point of view, but you also see it from Colin's point of view, how he looks at Miles, and, uh, yeah, they go through this whole argument. It's cool to just see both those stories just, like, collide, and, like, what is both going through their minds at the same time. Um, And I thought that was probably one of the bigger parts of the movie. Uh, And then also when uh, he still had the gun in his pocket after that altercation. Yeah. Uh, and the cops pulled up, and they spotlight him, and, like, he just, he cries afterwards, Mm -hmm. because they just drive away, and, like, I'm, like, I, I, I couldn't even imagine being in that situation. I couldn't fathom it, and it's just crazy how they made him cry, they made it feel very real, uh, and it's crazy that, that, that shit's going on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really, really great movie. I, I really liked it. Music was awesome. The music was really good. Um, it was I, also shot kind of 
bourbon like. I don't yeah. know how to describe it, but it did have a little because there are some yeah, scenes, was, especially in the beginning. I was looking at the director earlier. I think he's done mostly music videos. Okay, so, okay. that would make sense. I, that makes sense. I can see that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I picked yeah, it on that so one. So like, I was it, like it too. the quick way, there's people dancing in front of it, mm-hmm. and there's very, some very stylistic uh, shots on the people dancing, like, mm-hmm. and there's some cool different um, pans and, and city shots. Yeah. So I like that. Yeah, and then I think the scenes where he's running through the park and he's listening to music, and then he sees all these. People yeah. in the in the graveyard and yeah, it's it's there's some really really or, really good shots. Or the, the nightmare sequence too. Yeah, he's in the courtroom. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, that I really like that scene um, because there's a lot of symbolism symbolism going on and then he's and then Miles is also rapping and if you're listening to what he's saying there, he's saying a lot of important shit and it's some and I think he ends it with um, I wrote it down somewhere. He goes, uh, it's gonna be how it is until. Um, the lights go out until the lights go out. He like keeps repeating that, and it's like flashing black. Like th- that was a really good, really, really good scene. I liked it a lot. Um, yeah, and then just back to your guys' point about the length. I think the length of the movie was actually kind of perfect because they actually end on a good note, mm-hmm. and it just keeps you leaving that whole theme of the movie. Like you're constantly asking these questions, and you don't know what's going to happen, and you're curious as to what the outcome is. And I think that's why they just cut it at a good part, and they just drive away because it again like. That's the big question. So, yeah, I think it's cool. I remember being really happy that they didn't kill either of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was excited. Not even from just like a, like, I, I like these characters point of view, but a, like, I think the film becomes more interesting by having them survive. Yeah, and, yeah. And for, because now they're, they're, their characters, they are going to have to, we know they're going to have to continue to live with what has, what has happened and everything. Yeah. I think a weaker film would have either Miles or, or Colin or uh, either go get to jail shot, or get shot or, yep, or go to, exactly. or go to yeah. jail yep. or, or kill the officer yep. or something like that. I think it's, um, it's to its credit that it doesn't kind of fall into one of those emotion traps that you can you can easily fall into. Agreed. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry I cut you off, Blake. Yeah, yeah no, and it, just, that spoke to me in a second. Yeah, absolutely. It's so like I said, one of my biggest slides was was going to be the runtime, um, but I, I still think it felt well. Like I said, I still enjoyed the movie. Um, I just wish we got to be with those with those characters in that setting for a little bit longer. I think part of that is probably because it was that good of a movie. Right? Yeah. Um, Outside of that, I mean, I still like it. I think the scene where Colin and Miles are talking in the alley, I think that's the best scene in the movie. Yeah, it was really um, good. Yeah. It's really good to see that perspective of, of Miles' perspective, how he sees it. Um, they got a few quotes in there. It's just, it's really good. Um, it's well acted. It's well crafted. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I'm really good at that. Um, I love the scene, or, or, sorry, I, I love that scene between in, uh, Miles and, and Collins. I think it's just like, it's such an interesting concept of how Miles is all, for all intents and purposes, to, I mean, he fits a black stereotype. Of course, basically. yeah. He yeah, fits yeah, them all. He's a yeah. convicted felon. Uh, yep. You know what I mean? So he has all of those things. To well, my, Miles is not. I'm talking, or, I'm talking I'm about Miles, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, so he, You're talking about the bit where, where David Diggs calls him the N-word. Yeah. Yeah, right. basically. He's, right. yeah. he's like, dude, you're yeah, the like, for. You're the stereotype right. of yeah. that word. He's like, right. he's, who, he's who you are looking he Like, you are the people They're that looking for. That looking for. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he is, he fits all the stereotypes of the black person. He's loud and obnoxious to the guy in the mm-hmm. car in front of him early on in the movie. And mm-hmm. David Diggs is the one who gets blamed for it. Right. Um, he's, and, you, and, and you see all those actions. Are, and he's like, he's the one doing, he's the one selling the boat and, and speaking that modern lingo where he's like what do you just say he's like I got no idea but he gave me 300 so I think I sold the boat <laughs> um, like he is essentially a black person but he gets by with a lot of shit because he's a white and he mm-hmm. and, and that part of the movie is him talking to Val and he's like he, he felt bad that's why he visited you in jail he felt guilt for not going to prison for a crime that he put or for a fight that he pushed you into mm-hmm. um, it's just like that's such an interesting thing especially in society in 2020 where we're having all these riots and and protests and everything like that um to to say like to kind of show to kind of show the perspective of how it's like how it kind of is in america there's a double standard that people i don't have to live with the fear of walking down the street with a gun in my pocket getting pulled over that's you're right it's it's nothing it's not something i could ever imagine living through um and and something unfortunately i probably won't for you know foreseeable future because right. not a lot not a lot is changing or it, it, hopefully it will but um, right. that, that was something I want to ask you Blake about is obviously this has a very racial message and everything mm-hmm. like that and you're the only got black guy in the room so right. I, I, was, I was wondering what what with that perspective what does that change for you for the movie 
Um, I mean, I, 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 w I would say it's like these are always kind of movies you've seen just growing up, like in a black household, right? Mm -hmm. So um, one of the movies I had in my top ten list was probably a movie that's very similar to this that probably came out maybe two thousand or something right. like that. Um, but I would say with the times right now, it, it hits home even like more to watch mm -hmm. movies like this, especially with people who are not African American or of minority descent, because um, you like I said they they kind of put it into perspective. Um, where, where you can see it from both a person who, of color as well as a person not of color. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like it though. Um, I think both of the actors did really well. Yeah, uh, they both were really good. And Davy Diggs, um, if you guys do not know, is Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton, mm -hmm. which I think I've seen. Right, before. you said that last time. Yeah, right? so he, yeah. he's in the original then, cast of Hamilton. And then so is uh, Miles' wife. She, she's uh, Peggy Schuyler. Is she really? Yeah. Is that a thing? Uh, according to IMDb. Uh, yeah, they do not, not look similar at all. And I watched Hamilton last night. <laughs> um, you heard right. it here first, folks. I am Mama. L Wait, what's her what's her character's name? Jasmine Cephas Jones is is Ashley, and she's also Peggy Schuyler. No yeah, way. but the, the casting's good though, right? So e e yeah. even that even that bit where um. He gets all like the hot irons, right? And then he goes to the yeah, uh, the yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So the lady who runs like that beauty like, supply place. I like his mom too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah Colin's yeah. mom. Yeah. So um, the lady who ran that beauty supply place or the beauty um, hair place is uh, Have you guys seen Martin before? Yep. The TV yep. show Martin. Yeah. So that's Martin's wife. In yep. That. Okay. Um. So that was like, the first thing that popped in my head. I was like, oh wow, I haven't seen her in anything probably yeah. since in a while, right? Like, yeah. The 90s, yeah. you know. So it, it was funny that the casting spot on. Did you guys see um, um, Dennis Nedry in there, aka uh, Wayne Knight or uh, Newman the neighbor from uh, Seinfeld? He's the the uh, photographer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like the artist guy. I that knew I recognized him. Yeah, from yeah. something. He's yeah. just way skinnier now. Yeah, I knew I'd recognize him from something. But it's cool because that's actually like part of the message that they were trying to drive through the movie. Yeah. He just wanted them to look at each other as human beings mm -hmm. and just be in that moment. And it ended up being kind of like a joke to them. Yeah. So, and then it, it just kind of drives that whole theme. So, yeah, I, yeah. It, it was a really weird cameo, but it drove. Yeah, the gen I mean, the gentrification of Oakland's another big storyline that they have throughout the yeah, film as true. well. And just kind of also how the folks that are in these lower income neighborhoods that do get gentrified, how they have to react to those things or to that, that process itself. Um, I thought the title, going not to harp on the title again, but just thinking about it over too, I think the other kind of th area, it not only refers to the kind of vase picture thing as well, but also to the fact that the murder does happen. He witnesses the murder in his blind spot when he's driving the, he's driving, oh, the, sure, yeah, he's driving yeah. the truck and he's actually, he doesn't see the guy get murdered. He sees it in the, in the rear view mirror of the truck itself. Um, so I think it's it's kind of double um, spot, you know, double area symbolism. Symbolism yeah. there. Thank you. Um, that you know this 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 action that we're often reacting to and and it, and it affects us occurs. Um, the violence occurs in this area that we don't often we can't see for whatever reason, whether it be you know um, different point of view or anything like that it um, we don't always see the cause of it and it mm -hmm. happens a lot outside of outside or, or of people here. just sometimes ignore it too yeah exactly or, or, exactly or, or feign ignorance say yeah. you know it was in my blind spot didn't see it or whatever or exactly like yeah. yep. which I was, is actually where i thought the film was going to go when it first came up um the murder i thought he was going to the the murder was going to occur the cop was going there was going to be taking in the, and they were going to say what did you see and he was going to have to decide if it was oh, like he, he saw it in the blind yeah, spot yeah, or yeah, if, yeah. if he, or if he, if he sure. was going to say oh no it was in my blind spot i didn't see it but uh, it didn't go that way and i was kind of i was surprised i thought uh, I, the whole movie i thought was a, was consistently surprised me which was which was good yeah that's something uh, when we first talked about it, when i first brought it up you were like oh does it so it, it's one last ride kind of movie yeah uh, I, at the end of his at the end of his program yeah so it all and it, it, Go ahead, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, you're right. It, sorry, you're good. Um, it kind of does play with that a little bit. Um, I think it, it plays with it a lot. Yeah, yeah. The whole all, the whole tension of the film is, is, is he or is he not going to make it to probation? And yeah. then at the other side of it, what's, what's, what's it going to be? Right, because there's even times where he comes back late to that halfway house, yeah. right? And then, then the guy there is yeah. like, hey, 
can't, can't be doing this, this. Yeah. right? Yeah, you're supposed to clean the bathrooms. I think that's like his job there at the halfway house. Yeah, yeah, I, think yeah. I love his breakdown too. He's like, no, you got to do this because mm-hmm. you have to. You've been told that you can't do. Or yeah. I have to. I have to do these chores to prove that you can be an upholded, upstanding yeah. member of society and blah blah blah. And like, kind of like just lays out why things mm-hmm. are the yeah. way they are. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, like you are convicted and felon and two proved up. Yeah, it, 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 it did a great. Yep. Jo- it does a great job of illustrating the length that a jail term fucks up your oh, life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like outside the fact that you continue paying for that mm-hmm. long after you've actually left, stopped being incarcerated. Yeah, and it, and the biggest crime of that too is it follows him one event, a bar fight, has it will now follow him for the rest of his Correct. life. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and real quick, while well, I just looked at um, IMDb, the gentleman who plays like um, the head of the halfway house, I think it's James. Yeah, I recognize him from somewhere too. Um, so yeah, I just looked up what he's in, but he's also in that movie um, that I was talking about, uh, Paid in Full. That's one of oh, okay. oh, yeah. Thompson. So yeah, he's in that as well. Um, it's kind of a side character on there, but it also looks like he's in. Have you seen Snowfall? Oh no, but it, that's a show, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he's in that as well. That's all I see on here. Um, hmm. But, yeah, that was just a quick fun gotcha. fact on that one. Yeah. Um, I thought the scene where Sean gets the gun was yeah. really oh, good. That, that Sean's the little baby, Sean's right? a kid, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So Sean, um, Miles is a character, buys a gun for protection or whatever, mm-hmm. um, and th- th- then Sean, his kid, finds it, and they all walk back into the room, and they're, you know... It, it's a kid with a gun, loaded yeah. gun. So right. He points it at himself. I, points it at that's that's yeah. that's the point. It was wild. Oh. It's like just I, huge I love tension. how I love how when they get in the kitchen and then um Ashley looks and she's like, Oh my god, Miles, you brought a gun in here, right? Yeah. And, she, and then she looks at basically Colin to confirm, right? And he's like, Well, I didn't bring it in here. Or yeah. I forgot. She's this like, quote, Is that your right? gun, Colin? Yeah. Like, and he, like, looks he looks at, at him, Miles. He looks at his friends and he's like, and he's like no. Yeah. Because he's he well because he's tired of being held to that stereotype. Right. And that was kind of the turning point. I was like, okay, I think their friendship's probably gonna end up going a different way later on down the road. Right. Yeah. Um. So that was kind of good to see that. Um. Then I think yeah, right after that, that's when they end up going to that's the party later party. after that. Right. <laughs> the whole, same yeah. tattoo. Where yeah. I thought that was, a, yeah. <laughs> that, was <funny. laughs> that was so funny. That was so funny because it's the guy Miles absolutely hates has the same tattoo in the same so spot funny. too. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Um, that wasn't a good scene, though, uh, the fight that he gets in, because Miles gets basically profiled as another white person in this party, mm-hmm. and so it's like reverse profiling, almost, because usually I you mean. hear about profiling, it's mm-hmm. about it's black people, but yeah. it, white people can be profiled, too. Kind yeah, of. what does uh, the guy say? I think it's even a black guy who says something to him, it right? Is. Yeah, Where he's is. like, yeah. dude, yeah. he's like... Uh, you don't have to wear a grill in your mouth to fit in. Yeah, or something yeah. Like, yeah. Like, he's I like, forgot welcome to Oakland. Yeah, we're yeah. somewhere yeah. else. Yep. Yeah. And it's because it, well, cause usually Miles, throughout the movie, is dressed kind of more street or urban or whatever but in that one he's just got the t-shirt on that he, that it was that says Sa- uh, kill a hipster save your hood yeah. mm-hmm. uh, but it, but the t-shirt looks just like a regular t-shirt which he doesn't normally wear he kept saying oh it looks too small when it fits him perfectly he's like look how small this is look how tight this yeah. is um, and but it's when he's wearing that that he gets identified as just another white guy um, which I th- I, they play with these themes so much and so well I, I, I really yeah, it takes it takes the time to ask to ask the questions and go one step further with those that I think a lot of other films don't. A lot of films that that are uh, that have these they're about race as well. A lot of times don't go beyond the just the first question, that first kind of layer. And this does a great job of kind of taking those layers up a little bit and and, and going a little bit further on there without um, ever feeling like you're being emotionally assaulted or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I, I absolutely love this movie. Yeah. So hopefully you guys can see, I, I'm not expecting it to make it on any of your top 10 lists, but hopefully mm-hmm. you guys can understand why it shot so high up for me. I thought it was really good. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad, I would say, I'm glad a movie that has these types of things is in your top 10 though. Oh, yeah. I would say, I, I definitely enjoy that because yeah, like I said, I got one of those in my top 10 um, and I would always recommend movies like this to, to people. They make you think. They yeah, make you for think. sure. Yeah, and they give you a different perspective for sure. Um, because I, I I like really love the the message of the movie and how it deals with profiles and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I want these guys to be in more things together. Anytime they're on screen together, they're they they're incredible. Yeah. <laughs> like they yeah, play they, they play off awesome, each other so awesome well. Davy Diggs is great. Hamilton, he's fantastic. Like, I was so. really impressed with Raphael Cassell too. Yeah, no, no, he's yeah. great too. He's great too. Yeah, I, I want really them good. to and be And even the girlfriend's things. really good. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. I don't know what's her name, J- uh, Janina G- Gavankar. Has she been in anything? Oh Val, Val, yeah. She's the lead in Battlefront too. 
<laughs> is she really? She is! <laughs> yes, she is. Uh, she's in the morning show, which is that's the Apple, Apple TV, TV Plus one, one yeah. and the, the Way Back 2020. Isn't that uh, that's the that's Ben Affleck said, yeah. an alcoholic basketball coach. Everyone's okay. favorite tale of oldest time. Yeah, all right. Oh, she's in Space Force too, I guess. She's, I guess she's killing it. I, I did not know. All right, then. So, entropy list. Entropy list. This is interesting. I think. Where are you guys throwing it? I, I think number one, but I know that's probably not going to happen, and I, I accept that. Uh, so we had what? Arrival. Arrival. Arrival so it's Green Arrival, Room. Green Room, King of Staten Island. Okay. I would probably put this at three. That's where I'm at too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Arrival. I, I totally Arrival. Understand. Still, I think Arrival still beats Green Room, and and yeah. I just the. I think it's a little bit more of the genre for me, um, that I think Green Room beats it. But like this, I mean, that was close. This yeah. was I. This was an awesome movie. It was a good yeah. pick. Yeah. Um, I I like I said I don't expect this to be number one. That's just. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would. I think I'm with Tyler. I would put it above King of Staten Island. Um, would not put it above Green Room. Would not put it above Arrival. Um, great movie. I do like it. It does have its shortcomings sometimes, um, but it's a good message, right? Yeah. So I mean, it's it's kind of like the King of Staten Island in, in that regard, right? Where they're kind yeah. of, you're going out like on a higher note. Um, it's a much more interesting film than the King of Staten Island. Without a doubt, and that's why I put it above that. Yeah. Without a doubt. And, and it's much more interesting just off the racial tension. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and I would leave it at that. All right. Nathaniel, you agree at number three? Yeah, I, I'd put it at three. I think, um, it, and again, it's always important to remember this is this is just our list. This is going to be a lot different from for different people, uh, for sure. Um, I can easily see this being on a lot of people's top, top one out of, out of all the movies that we've talked about. Um, overall, I mean, like it's online. I would say, yeah, all, out of all of them, I think it. I like the message it sends. I like how it sends yeah. them. So. Yeah, for uh, I would definitely agree with the group though. Uh, for me, it's it's three below Green Room and Arrival. And I can hundred percent understand why you guys put it at three, and I have no qualms with it at number three. No Fair qualms enough. at all, which is hilarious. I wish we had like a, a gavel. We just, <laughs> it's that decided. Could be, that, could be, <laughs> that could be arranged. I'll, I'll, I'll work on a gavel. All right. Um, all right, so our new entry list, which you can find on my letterbox, uh, which is H at H, um, is Arrival, Green Room, Brownie Spotting, and The King of Staten Island. We got four movies on here, guys. All, I would say, yeah, all great, all, all really good, all all good and above. So yeah, we're not leading you astray. Don't worry, gang. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would go as far to say, I mean, if I had to rank them all with within a scale of one to ten, right? I would even say that King of Staten Island being at the bottom, I'd still probably give that a seven. Oh, I would give it King of Staten Island like an eight. Or so, something. But I yeah. think that's no. Like, there's no bad movies yeah. on our list by any means. Not yet. Not yet. No, yeah. Do we have? But any? I don't think Arrival is getting dethroned anytime soon, guys. That's gonna take uh, <laughs> even prisoners. It's gonna take some work. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll we'll see. Bit of sizzle. Bit of sizzle, gang. That will bring us into uh, the outro of the podcast. So yeah, our next topic next week is going to be prisoners. Which uh, you know, let's just go make sure because we've been saying it over and over again that it might be on HBO Max. Um, off pod. Fresh for you. We'll find out. But I will find out right now. It. Mm, Looking like it is on HBO Max. Hey. Baby. Let's go. Perfect. Yeah. All Get right. imprisoned, folks. Get yeah, so imprisoned we're doing prisoners. prisoners. <laughs> so, uh, another villain of wave. Yeah. Villain, how do I, I pronounce this? I, I say it differently every time, I'm pretty Villeneuve. sure. I just call him Denny Villeneuve. 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 I took French. I should be able to. Okay, yeah. But even that's kind of tricky. Anyway, uh, honestly. Denny V. Denny V. <laughs> another Denny V. You got Gyllenhaal and Hugh Jackman. The yeah. Jack, the Jack Man. Yeah. Terrence Howard's in that one too. Jack, yeah. is he really? Yep. Yeah. He is, and I can't think of um, the daughter's name. Viola Davis. But is that's in this. um, it's Hugh Jackman's Ooh. best friend. Yeah, that's yeah. Terrence okay. Howard. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. So prisoners next week. Hey, we got a review. We got another review. We our, got a our review. Five gang. star oh. review segment. That's right, folks. Nathaniel Gingrich, take it away. Five star reviews. If you give us a five star review, I will review it on the podcast. I will also read it on the podcast. That's right. I'm reviewing your reviews from now on. So that's <laughs> what we're going with. 
Um, you can say anything you want. You can be mean. You can say I have a funny voice. You can say I have a funny hat. But you have to give us five stars, otherwise you will not hear me say it. He's we're gonna have to. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to start an entry list for the five star review. Ooh, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> well, I got a heater of us uh, for one right now. This one says. Five out of seven, perfect pod. Uh, this is from Heath Ledger is number one, and it says three cool guys and a certified learned movie master talk about the greatest performances of Zachary Quinto's career. So, <laughs> um, bit of uh, tongue in cheek in there from, from never, some of our I listeners. I will never downlive that, I guess. Uh, no, you will not downlive will that. Not downlive Just like you're not gonna, you're not gonna downlive. downlive. Live saying down live. <laughs> live that down. Yep. There you go. There we go. It's been a long pod. <laughs> uh, but yeah, folks, please do tell a friend. Uh, tell anyone you like, anyone you don't like. Uh, we are trying to grow. We appreciate all of your support so far, but the way you can help us out most is just sharing yeah. the good news. Word of mouth is how podcasts get spread most of the time. Probably. Write it on a bathroom stall. I give you permission. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, Interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we can move on to plugs. Follow the show. Um, our Twitter is at Banter Row. Um, YouTube, please go subscribe to us on YouTube. Even if you even if you listen to the podcast, uh, we appreciate your subscription on YouTube. It is free. Yeah, even if you listen on something else is what he means. Yes, yeah, so if you uh, listen on a podcast service, yeah, service. we would appreciate your sub on YouTube. Uh, or give us a watch on YouTube and give us a like. Leave us some comments. Uh, speaking of comments, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or grievances about the pod, you can reach us at uh, backrowbanterpod at gmail.com. Um, I'm checking the in- inbox now. I was going to say, do not. we check this? I do. No, I, I check, <laughs> this, I I check yeah. this often. So, uh, yeah, we got nothing. It's empty, people. We're lonely here. Uh, Miles Teller is the only people person in our inbox. Yeah, we're, we're still we're, arranging that interview. We're keeping him on ice right now. Yeah, he's uh, he's trying to play burn, a little hardball with us, and we're not that, about that yeah, here. You know, can't burn that uh, hot content too quick. You know, we don't history. take shit from no one. That's right, not especially Miles that Teller. Miles Teller. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Miles. <laughs> think just because you're in my favorite movie, it gives you a pass. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you, Miles Teller. No, wow, saying. wow. <laughs> All right, calm down. <laughs> We didn't need to go there. We're sorry, Miles. He does not speak for us. We love you, Miles. All right. Uh, Nathaniel, where can the people find you? Uh, well, you can also find me. I run the Back Row Banter Instagram account, so oh, that is at, uh, at Back Row Banter Pod. I should add that, huh? Yeah, you should. Please go, come follow us. Um, I'll be over there flexing my visual arts degree all day. Yamo be there. <laughs> <laughs> Five to your Yamo be here one more time. Yamo burn this place to the ground, oh folks. A little 40 year old version <laughs> reference for you there. <laughs> um, but yeah, come hang out on Instagram. It's fun. Um, we post like sometimes behind the scenes photos of us recording and that kind of thing. So you got to be there to see it. Uh, but you can follow me personally on Letterboxd and Twitter at NS Gingrich. That is N-S-G-I-N-G-R-I-C-H. Thank the Pennsylvania Dutch for that one. Um, and you can also find me on my personal Instagram. That is at NathanielG92. My name is spelled with an I-E-L because they're fun. That's a good way to spell it. That's the best way to spell it. It's, yeah, I would say overall. Um, Tyler, what about you? Uh, you can find me at Instagram, Facebook, I guess, if that's the thing still. Is um, it? I don't know. Some folks. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Letterbox and Twitter, uh, all at Tyler.Vidalis. That's V-I-D-A-L-E-S. Has there been a dot in between it the whole time? I think it's just oh, at Tyler Vidalis. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's just Tyler Vidalis. Yeah, there's you, no you famously period. just got the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. I think I was confusing my work email. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. But well, whatever. if you want to get rid of that one, that will be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, I'm, I'm honestly going to make a, a decent effort at trying to stream more. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's at uh, El Trabajo eighty seven E L T R A B A J O eighty seven. The work, the work. Let's get it. Blake, cool. And uh, as for me, you can go ahead and follow me on um, Letterboxd. And I keep saying this every time. Well, the the username for that I should say is my name, Blake Holder. Um, as far as on Letterboxd, I keep saying I need to put some reviews in there, but every time I just hit log and log <laughs> my stars and save it. Yeah. Um, so I'll get around to that eventually. Maybe uh, I'll maybe try to put a review in there for prisoners because that's in my top ten as well. Yeah, might as well. So uh, 
We'll go from there. You can also find Blake by throwing a message in a bottle into Lake Michigan. <laughs> um, it somehow goes directly to his house. We don't know how. It's the wildest works. thing. Yeah. He, um, yeah. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah, it's a, it's a little known fact. Word has Learn it. something new today. Yeah, a bit of sizzle. It. Word has it some of our group messages are just delivered via Lake Michigan to Blake. Yep. <laughs> instead, of, instead of at Blake Holder, it's just give him a little toss in the Lake Mish. Come so straight, straight to the phone, exactly. man. Exactly, yeah. But then Blake, to get it back to us, get this listeners, also throws it back in Lake Michigan. <laughs> and then we just never get it. That's why we don't. he doesn't respond. Time. <laughs> I'm uh, on Twitter at Am Schwartz and at Aish. Uh, Letterbox is at Aish. And I'm on Twitch at Aish. That's A Y Y S H. Thank you all for listening. This has been episode six of Back Row Banter. It's a long one, but that's okay. It's going to be a long one. I'll edit it and we'll see where it ends up. Where are we in it? Dude, I can't even tell you. Because uh, uh, we, 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 we paused once and uh, we okay. also, yeah, it, who knows. All right, so we'll be our BN? We'll be our BN. We'll be right back. BRB. Black Row Panther. That's what that stands for. BRB. BRB. Hey. Cool. That's a top tier show right here. Oh my god. Little, 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 little. Krusty Krab pizza is the pizza for you, you and win. me. Dude, when he breaks that down. <laughs> the Krusty Krab pizza. You're like walking in like a snowstorm that's underwater. <laughs> it's like <a> squidward. <laughs> And then he puts his ear to the ground. He's like, I saw the pioneers do it. It's, it's a rock. It's a, it's a rock. Oh, that pioneer used to ride these babies for miles. <laughs> what a good show. Yeah, that's, that's definitely my favorite show as well. I need to bring the timer up. Let it rip. Time to shit. talk about movies. Six episodes no. in, you want to change? <laughs> time, to time to talk about movies. <laughs> Still on the SpongeBob one. My favorite episode is the one where they're teaching uh, Squidward how to like, catch jellyfish. Oh, he's like, all right, yeah, yeah. firmly grasp it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he like stamps firmly it. Firmly grasp it. <laughs> stamps it into his hand. He's like in like a wheelchair. It's hilarious, yeah, man. Yeah. That's such is it the one with the stop on the left foot? That's blowing bubbles. That's the it? first. Yeah, yeah. That's, the, yeah. that's when he's. Um, oh, that might be actually how it starts. Bring it around. <laughs> oh, is that when he's tiny shoe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the right foot? Don't forget it. <laughs> and then. Yeah, that show is way too Hell funny. Dude. Bonkers. You can watch that as an adult and it's like still fucking yeah. hilarious. Oh, yeah. That, that his laugh is hard to get over a little bit. It is so a little. With the. Ah! Yeah, I think. A little grating? Yeah, but it's alright. It's still good. It's still good regardless. Don't have like blatant swear words in there and those add like a dolphin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was one of the first ones I saw. Those are sentence enhancers. Squidward smells good. Mm-hmm. <laughs>